Um, I've added a couple of things. I'm actually not going to be using this, so I'm just going to uh, get rid of the offset ink amount. It might become relevant in, a, in another video somewhere down the line, but just right now, I'm not really going to be using that. So the difference between this one and the previous one is that now I've included the uh, live loop met. So this is kind of a, a metronome type sort of thing that other that all of the live loops will sync to. Um, still not that relevant right now, but might be relevant a little bit later down the line. Instead of hard coding the start positions and the finish position, this is now taken care of by an, uh, a variable called Kerpos, current position, which is zero. So that means that now if we change current position, then the start point will update. But then the finish is basically current position plus whatever we set the offset to be. So the offset is essentially the distance between the start point and the end point. Um, and that's really good now because, you know, we don't have to, you know, you change one uh, item and you, you get sort of the double effect, as it were. And instead of having a, a ring of slices down here, I've got them up here as a slice ring. Um, in this one, I'm, I'm skipping number six. There is a reason for that. <laughs> but at some point we will get that. Um, and essentially, it's really just sort of moving around like that, really. Let's have a listen. So at the moment, current position it gives us the starting point that we want to be at. And then the offset gives us the distance to the finish point. So at the moment, the finish, the uh, offset is 0 0.009. So let's say we knock off uh, a zero and call that 19. So you can hear that the, the size of the window has increased. Let's call it 29. Now they start to overlap. That's now got an interesting effect, right? And if we sometimes, you know, if you don't want to change the, or for me, when I've been working with it, where I don't want to change the offset amount, sometimes when I use a different audio file that's not as long as this one, the slices are really short. So I have something to just add a bit more, like the 0.1. With this audio file, they overlap too much. So now we're getting close to something that, that gives us a bit more of a of a um, of a kind of a a non-linear kind of sample kind of playback um, experiment. Maybe it's a piece of music. I don't know. Okay, I'm going to leave that one there as it is, and then uh, in the next video, we're going to look at sort of expanding uh, the code to get a bit more movement uh, going. Okay, until next time.